start eating them, you can't stop eating them. Jeff Jones, I'm back with another video. Listen, you see the thumbnail, you see the title, so you already know what I'm about to talk about. But before I do, I just wanna remind y'all that the cash giveaway is still gonna happen as soon as we get to a thousand subscribers. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video. Let's get it popping, man. All right, y'all, so later in the video, I'm also gonna talk about uh, my experiences with dispatchers, how I find my dispatchers, and how you can find a good dispatcher. But that's gonna come a little bit later. But for now, I'm gonna talk about this $3.60 load I got, which is finally looking like something. Yeah, this load is going from Reno to Los Angeles. Hold on a second, y'all. One second. I had to change, I had to change my hat to the back because my <laughs> my girl says I look like Joe from you uh, when I uh, when I wear it straight to the front, when I wear the black hat straight to the front like that. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so this load is going from Reno, Nevada to Los Angeles and it's paying $3.60, over $3.60 a mile. Um, one of the best loads that we've seen since we've been out here. Uh, and I say we, I'm talking about the company. I'm not crazy or anything. <laughs> and to be honest, all the loads should be like this. It's not a flex, not flexing, um, but really, you know, people in the comments talk about how the brokers are watching, so I don't talk about the numbers. So I'm gonna talk about the numbers. This is a $3.60 a mile load, a little bit more than $3.60. And this is how they all should be because we assume all the risks, all the risks, all the fuel costs I spent um, just in this one truck, almost $9,000 in fuel for one month. And that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, weren't getting the best rates, weren't getting piss poor rates, but weren't getting the best rates. And so, anyway, um, all the loads should be definitely over 250, um, 240, 250, but this is how it should be. And I know we're just now coming out of a slow season, so things are gonna slowly get and continue to get better, which I'm good with that, but I'm gonna continue to talk about the numbers. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give y'all all the gross numbers. I'm gonna give y'all hints at net profits maybe in the future i'm for sure gonna continue to talk about the numbers uh because it's important man we need to know people are using these videos as inspiration you know as motivation and y'all gotta know what's out there you know and i'm transparent you know i share loads i told you you know two dollars and eleven cent a load i'm gonna share you know loads that i feel like are relevant so y'all can see what's available what's happening um but yeah i mean i, I i'll probably run it with y'all a little bit more my break time is uh it's over now so I'm about to get back on the road again going from Reno to uh, to Los Angeles right outside of Los Angeles uh, let me see so yeah it's going to uh, Glendora it's going to Glendora California which is right outside of LA and anyway um, it's uh, what 460 miles I decided to go back through the mountains. For those of you who know um, the route, I decided to go back through the mountains um, only because I didn't want to, you know, run the risk of not being able to stop and get fuel at my fuel uh, preference where we have a fuel card at. Um, so, you know, I would have to drive like seven hours, which I've done it before. And this truck is definitely capable of um, driving for seven hours without having to stop. Um, by the way, comment below let me know if y'all want me to do a full review of this international truck that I have. Um, let me know what y'all think because I know a lot of people uh, talk bad about the internationals, but um, I'll do a full review if you, you guys comment below and let me know what you think. But yeah, my um, break's over, so I got to get back to it. I got to get on the move, and uh, I'll run it with y'all when I make it to Los Angeles. They got a whole bunch of stuff I want to do in Los Angeles, too. I'm so excited. I used to live in LA. <sighs> I'm about to give me some good food. I'm excited, y'all, but um, I'll see y'all in a little bit. See y'all.
yo, what up? As you probably guessed, it is a whole new day and I am in LA. Now listen, I am already enjoying myself since last night when I got here. I stopped to Vegan Glory and pigged out. Like I literally just ate everything I could get off the menu and it was glorious. It was glorious. Listen, you don't even have to be vegan to enjoy that place. It's just so good. But um, I'm about to go to my second favorite place, uh, Ducks Donuts. Give me some donuts it's in the morning. Still haven't dropped that load off yet, but I'll get back to y'all in a minute. Tell y'all a little bit more about that. Uh, but I'm about to go ahead and get my donuts real quick and i get back to y'all in a second. So it's about that time. My LA trip is about to come to an end and I'm sad, but I still have one more place I want to go eat and one more place I want to go to. I want to go to uh, Shades of Africa in Long Beach, California. So I'm gonna try to get down there, but uh, enough of my LA adventures. Listen, this load, like I said before, this load is paying a little bit more than $3.60 a mile which is great and the reason why i'm telling you all this is again not to you know to to really anything like that but it's for motivation and inspiration to let you guys know that there is money to be made out here in a box truck and also to all the people who say that you know the brokers are watching and that's what they're ter determining rates on and blah 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 listen this particular broker did the right thing she uh, was openly sympathetic about um, everything that we as owner operators have to experience and she admitted that there is a lot of brokers taking advantage of box truck and shot um, and hot shot owners and she's not one of them she's transparent I've actually had another broker that I work with uh, recently who said the same thing so for all of you who are scared to talk about these issues then you're part of the problem I think because y'all are accepting cheap rates and then getting online and telling everybody else not to take cheap freight. Somebody's taking this cheap freight because it's definitely moving. So all I'm saying is don't accept anything less than what you feel you deserve because you deserve to make five to $7,000 a week. All you need is three loads like this, three loads like this, and that's 5,000 a week. You get two more and you're over 7,000 a week. So, and you know, I'm thankful. I give thanks for, uh, for this load and this opportunity. And I'm gonna continue to do that, continue to be grateful for everything that comes my way to, uh, to, to make a profit. And we're just gonna keep on elevating. But I did say that I was gonna talk about my experiences with dispatchers in this video. And so real quick, I just wanna say that so one way that you can actually find a dispatcher is they'll find you, right? When you sign up for your MC number, you get your DOT number, they start immediately marketing to you and they start offering their services. I don't personally recommend uh, using one of those people because I just, you know, I don't like the fact that they, the fact that they you know, it just don't sit well with me that, uh, you know, you, are hounding me about services like that as soon as my authority go active because you think I don't know better because I have a new authority. It don't sit well with me. So if you need a dispatcher, they'll find you, don't worry. There are plenty of dispatchers out there who are eager to help you. Uh, how I found my first dispatcher, I was in Florida, I was in Miami and I was stuck and I Google searched. <laughs> I, literally, I literally Google searched dispatchers for box trucks <laughs> and uh, what happened was I didn't realize that at the time but they pulled up all the local businesses listed under dispatchers so I ended up with a Miami dispatcher and um, you know I was grateful for her services the first week um, well the first load actually <laughs> because it got me out of a, a dead area 
um, but pretty much it was downhill after that. Um, there were red flags back to back from the beginning. Even the first load that she got me was a red flag, but um, ended up having to let her go. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, it wasn't the worst experience, but it wasn't a good experience either, especially having to like fire somebody a week and a half after hiring them, you know, it sucks. But then I went to uh, the different groups that I'm a part of on Facebook and I just went to all the dispatchers on there and really reviewed, you know, what their services were, what they're offered and the presentation. And just, you know, I looked at everything. I judged, I judged them based off of the information that they were presenting. And I selected the people that I wanted to call and get information about. And me and my partner, we literally interviewed them. And I know we were probably annoying um, because in this industry, everything is very relaxed and it's kind of like, you know, just, everything's just very relaxed. Nothing is really formal, but we were asking questions and, um, you know, some of them tried not to even give us chances to ask questions um, and just kind of trying to like, you know, sign us up for their services. Uh, but we weren't going for that. And ultimately we had a dispatcher who was pleasant to talk to, uh, cause that's the big thing, you know, we're gonna be dealing with her literally every day um, in our business. So she needs to be somebody, or he needs to be somebody that we can actually get along with. And who, you know, who has the, you know, proper experience, the proper low boards, the knowledge to know what to do, the wherewithal. She answered all our questions. We asked like uh, questions about the challenges. We asked questions about which low boards, how many low boards. Um, about her other carriers if she had other carriers and how many other carriers because we want to make sure that she has actually she actually has time to work with us you just got to ask questions like it's not hard it's no place that you can just like go to and um find dispatchers but they're all around us <laughs> they're all around us even word of the mouth um you know people other truck drivers have dispatchers you can ask uh, people that you know, people that you might see in Walmart or something who have on headsets, they might be able to point you in the right direction to find uh, a dispatcher who will be able to help you. You know, if they don't use one, they probably know somebody who does. So finding a, a dispatcher just requires you to like do a little footwork and getting out there and asking questions and networking. Uh, if you could do that, I'm sure you'll find a dispatcher who will work well with you and you might have to do like we did. and. You know, I had to try one on, you know, try one on and if it works out, it works out. If it don't, it don't. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you read the fine print and also bring your own terms and conditions to the table as well. Just because they present a dispatcher and carrier agreement doesn't mean that that's the only terms and conditions that you can work under. You can um, add your own terms and conditions. You can say, hey, uh, you know, I agree to all your terms and conditions, but here, are a few of mine um, that I would like to add to this. And if it's okay with you, then we can go ahead and sign it and uh, get this inked and get this deal done. So break your own terms and conditions as well, if you conditions as well, to make sure that you're able to protect yourself as well. Um, but other than that, guys, I still have a little bit more time until I could drop this load off. So like I said, I'm about to go enjoy my last few hours in LA. I'm about to go to Honeybees, get me a vegan burger. Then I'm gonna go to Long Beach. Well, actually, I'm gonna go to Long Beach now uh, because I'm closer to Long Beach. And then I'm gonna go to Honey Beach because it's closer to my drop off in um, in LA. So that's it, guys. Um, about to uh, run at Home Depot real quick. I'm sure y'all can see it in the reflection. I'm gonna go to Home Depot, get some supplies real quick. And then I'm gonna go. Uh, get a, a workout in in the gym, shower, change, then go to Long Beach, then go to Honeybees, get something to eat, and then go drop my load off. So I just kind of talked through my schedule to make sure. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's what I'm on. That's what it is. And I'll holla at y'all. See y'all in the next video.